this video is the first in several videos that explains how to set up the PixLite 16 from HoldayCore.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to connect the power, connect the network, launch the configuration utility to find the controller for configuring its settings. So first, let's talk about hooking up the power. Now, on this side of the board here, you'll see that I have a power connection. The power inputs are clearly labeled as positive and negative, and you can see that I have a band around here indicating the positive on this input lead. Now, the power that I'm going to be supplying in this particular case is 12 volts, but it could be 5 volts also. You would do that based upon the types of LED pixels you're going to be using. These pixels, in this particular case, are 12 volts, and so I will be running all of the LED pixels on this output with this particular voltage. Now, if you have, let's say for example, 2811 12 volts on this side, you can have 2811 5 volts on this side just by powering them differently. So, all the power input from this side will go to this side of the controller, this side to this side of the controller, and these are labeled 1 through 8 and 8 through 16. Now, the power for the board itself to power the board will come from this power input off of bank 1, 8, or 1 through 8. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and power it up. Now, before we do that, though, I'm going to show you the remainder of my setup. Now, your network setup is highly dependent upon your particular circumstances. For example, you may have a laptop, and it is connected to a wireless network, but it also has an Ethernet port. Because this device does not have wireless, because there's not sufficient bandwidth in wireless, what we have is a need to plug this into a wired network. Not only is that more reliable, but it also provides all the sufficient bandwidth. Now, in this particular case, for simplicity, what I've done is I've used a regular Cat5 cable here, and I've plugged it into a standard router, in this case one from Monoprice, and this cable here goes out to my PC. Now, you also could plug this cable directly right from the Ethernet port here on the PixLite directly to your router or your home network. It really just depends on your particular needs. So if you have a laptop and it has an Ethernet port, you can plug that directly in as appropriate with the appropriate cables. Now, let's go ahead and power up the unit and then we'll talk about how to connect this to your network and get it seen by the configuration utility. So again, I've put the power over here. I'm gonna turn on my power supply and you're gonna see some lights flash here. Now, when it first powers up, you're going to see that these lights are flashing. It is attempting to get an IP address from your network. So if your router, and this is not a router, this is just a switch, so it's a very dumb device uh, in the sense that it will not provide an IP address to this uh, PIX light, what I'll need to do is use its default IP address. Now, in this particular controller, this default address is 192.168.0. Dot 50. So let's go ahead and bring up the configuration options. So I'm going to bring up control panel here, and this is in Windows 7. Uh, your operating system uh, version, Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8 may differ. So we're going to go ahead and go to networks, network set, go to change adapter settings. And this internal network is my network card. And this is the card that is hooked to right here. So what I have basically here is a very small network between my PIX light and this switch and my PC right here. So this cable, the green one, is the internal network. You could also put a second network card in your computer and supply it with a different IP address and a different network. That will help separate the traffic out from your network. So if you have a wireless network on your home network, you may wish to do this or you may have a direct dedicated connection from this computer directly to the PixLite if you have a show PC. So each person's need is uh, unique and you'll need to set it up appropriate to your particular needs and your network. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm just going to right click the network properties of this network card and you can see here we have TCP IP and TCP IP is the protocol that runs over Ethernet. You can see here that this is a gigabit ethernet card uh, it's running over ethernet which is over the cat5 cable so we're going to click properties of tcp ip 
And in this particular case, you can see we already have it configured. So let's just go ahead and set it up the way we'd normally see it. So if you have a normal PC and you have a router on your network and it is assigning DHCP IP addresses and this device is plugged in, it will automatically get an IP address from your network of the right address type for your network. Here I'm just going to assume maybe that didn't work for you and we want to use the default IP address of 192.168.0.50. So what I'm going to do is create an IP address that's in that subnet. So I'm going to go 192.168.0.2 and that mask is 255.255.255.0 and the default gateway is going to be 192.168. In this case we'll just make up 101. We don't need to put any DNS addresses. I'm just going to click OK. So what this is means is that the router is on 50, this computer is on 2, so that means that they're basically in the same block. They're in the same area and they'll be able to talk to each other. So if you have an address that differs radically like 10, 10, 10, dot 10, that won't work in many cases. So I'm going to go again, 192, 168.0.2 in this case, click OK, hit close. Um, now, what we could do is we could just do a quick test here. You can bring up the command prompt, just type CMD on the run command and it'll bring up this command prompt or you can just type command prompt in. And what we're going to do is we're going to just first look at my IP address. I'm going to type IP config and you can see that my IP address is 192.168.0.2 and I do not have any additional adapters or network cards with that. Now if I had a wireless card, I might also see that in here too. Now if you see media disconnected and it is to your port that is going to the card that is an Ethernet, that means that this particular switch is not hooked up to it. So a lot of different factors here, a lot of resources on the internet. This really doesn't have anything to do technically with a Pixlite. Uh, has more to do with networking because the Pixlite is nothing more than a miniature computer here. All right. So let's do a simple test here. We're going to do a ping, and a ping just basically sends some data over to the controller and asks it, are you here? So I'm going to ping 192.168.0.50. Again, that is its default IP address because it has not received a uh, DHCP assigned address for my network. And I'm going to press enter. And you can see here it's responding. So I'm going to go ahead and put a dash T, which means to go ahead lowercase t. That means go ahead and start pinging it constantly. I'm going to show you here, if I disconnect this network connection, you can see that the response stops and then it says timed out. And as soon as I plug it back in, it starts working. Now, there are additional diagnostic LEDs at the bottom of this board and you can see them there. So we're going to go ahead and unplug it again and then plug it back in. And what we can see here is a status that indicates that we have a link, which is the green light, and you can see the orange or yellow light, and that one is flashing. And you'll also notice it's in time with the ping. So it's actually indicating that there's data going to the pix light. All right, so at this point, that means that we know that my PC, with this command prompt, can reach our pix light controller, and we are ready to go. So let's go ahead and minimize those resources, and we're gonna go ahead and use the assistant tool. I'm going to go ahead and run that. I'm going to select run. You can download this from a link off of our website. Now this tool is designed for USB devices and network devices. This is a network device, it's not USB. So we're going to go ahead and hit search and immediately you can see that this comes back with our particular pix light. Now if you're familiar with LiDARAMA controllers you'll see that this is similar. In a LiDARAMA world you hook it up and any of the LiDARAMA controllers on the networks that are connected to the PC will show up just like they do here in this configuration tool. That makes it easy to find. So this is why if you are using DHCP in your particular uh, instance, you don't need to know what the IP address is. No need to know what it is. Just plug it into your network. If it gets an IP address properly, you just simply pull up the tool. It will go out, query the network, and it will find the controller. And so we pull it up, you can see that it has the model number, the name. Now, 
This is uh, where you can name the controller, and that will record the data into the controller. And so it'll have a unique name like Megatree or House Outline. Now we can also see the IP address here. And we can see the firmware version, and we can see the current temperature on the board itself. Okay, now let's go ahead and click on the Pixlite 16 and bring up its configuration. Now, you can see that there are four different tabs at the top here. Now, we are going to go into more detail about the control LEDs and miscellaneous in another video and to talk about those in greater detail. But let's first talk about the network. Now, this particular controller, you may wish to, after you've got it set up, set it to a static IP address, and that's most often what you want to do. Go ahead, set a static IP address so that you know when you go into your software application like Lightarama, S3 Advanced, or Lightshow Pro, or Vixen, or any of the other applications which support E131 and the Pixlite, you'll always be sure what IP address you're communicating with. Or your network may be addressed differently. For example, it may be on a 10-10-10 type of address, or it might be on a 192.168.1 type address, which is common with, let's say, for example, Linksys routers. All right, so I have a different network that's not like this addressing, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in 192.168.1 and then the IP address. So I'm gonna put in two, and you can go from one through 255. So you want to, of course, pick one that's not assigned in your network with DHCP. Now, if you're not sure if that's true or not, you could always, before you start, you could ping address. So for example, you could ping 192.168.1.176. Now, of course, here, uh, some people may note that uh, I am on a different IP address range and not hooked up to my regular network, but that would allow you to see if that IP address was configured. So in that particular case, I'm going to go ahead and configure it and uh, with the proper subnet mask. Now, most subnet masks for small networks is going to be 255, 255, 255. If you're unsure, consult one of the internet subnet calculators. And we're also going to go ahead and select status, uh, static. That static means we're not going to use dynamic host configuration protocol, which means go get my IP address from somewhere else. We want a static, non-changing IP address. All right. Now, let's go ahead and do a search. Now, what we'll see here is it's not coming back up. Now, the reason it's not coming back up is because its IP address is no longer in the proper subnet. So, let's pull back up our network here. So, normally this is the point where I would plug it into my regular network. I'll select one dot two, for example, because again, we changed only this octet. Whoops, I'm sorry. We also need to change that. And I'm gonna click OK. And let's try our ping again. Look at that. 192.168.1.76, remember here when we had the search, it didn't work. Ping, there you go. Now we pull back, we've got a static IP address, so as soon as you click OK, you're going to go ahead and set in those settings. Now at this point, uh, you can go through, look at the different settings, and you may also want to change its nickname from default nickname to something like Mega Tree. Then that'll allow you to easily identify this particular unit. So see here, you can see that the units come back up. It's now called Megatree, and of course it still has the static IP address. So let's go ahead and power this unit down. You can see that the lights are off. And you're going to see that the light here uh, for the status, the red one, is going to change. We're going to go ahead and power it back up here. Now, you'll notice that uh, the light here in just a moment will come on. And let's do a check here again. Okay, so we'll do a search. And you can see it's coming back up just fine. So. At this point, we've configured the static IP address. It might not hurt to go ahead and print a label, either put it on the back, put it on the side, put it on something, so that you'll remember exactly what IP address this particular device is. All right, now you're ready to move on to the remaining videos that explain 
how to configure the Pixlite settings, and then also what options you have 